A laser power sensor absorbs laser power as part of the process of measuring it. If that power is not removed at least as quickly as it comes in, the sensor may overheat and fail. Low power standalone sensors have no problem dissipating enough heat into the surrounding air just from their body surface area. Moderate power standalone sensors are typically designed with additional surface area to help with this. Here you can see our pin fin design, which includes a heatsink as part of the body of the sensor. High power sensors are usually fan cooled or water cooled. What about OEM sensors? They typically need to be small to fit inside the host system. If water cooling is used, then the size of the sensor is not very relevant to its capacity. But many applications require conduction cooling, meaning a heat sink is needed. Many of Ophir's OEM power sensors have a maximum average power specification of so many watts freestanding and so many watts heat sinked. How does one make sure that the sensor has been provided with proper heat sinking? While we do provide a heatsink accessory for our standard pyroelectric sensors, we do not offer heatsinks for OEM applications because every application requires its own solution. We do, however, offer some guidelines. We need to consider two separate issues. One, conduction of heat out of the sensor into the heatsink. And two, dissipation of the heat from the heatsink into the surrounding air. Let's first consider issue number one, getting heat from the sensor to the heatsink. A heatsink will normally be attached to a specific side of the sensor body. Generally, both sides of an OEM sensor are provided with screw holes, so either side can be used for this purpose. A useful rule of thumb is that when properly heatsinked with thermal heatsink compound, about four watts of power can be removed by conduction for each square centimeter of conduction surface area. For example, if we consider our 20C UAS family of thermal OEM sensors, we note that the maximum average power is specified as 4 watts freestanding, 20 watts heat sinked. The heat sink is normally attached to one of the sides having surface area of 38 millimeters by 34 millimeters, or about 13 square centimeters. Using our rule of thumb of 4 watts heat dissipation for each square centimeter of conduction surface area in contact with the heat sink, we could in principle remove up to 4 times 13, or about 50 watts from the 20 CUAS, which is certainly more than the sensor's rated maximum of 20 watts as long as a suitable heat sink is used and it's in good thermal contact with the sensor body. Now let's consider issue number two, dissipation of the heat from the heat sink to the air. Regarding the surface area needed to dissipate the heat into the air, we can apply another rule of thumb that says approximately six square centimeters of heat sink surface area can dissipate about one watt into the surrounding air. Based on this, we can estimate that the required surface area of a heat sink for enabling the 20 CUAS to handle 20 watts should be about 20 times 6, or roughly 120 square centimeters at least. It's important to note that usually the sensor is mounted to some type of metal plate, and the metal plate is often attached to the chassis on the inside of the host system. If there's good thermal contact between the sensor and the plate, for example, through the use of a suitable thermal grease compound, and the plate is in good thermal contact with the chassis, this is usually enough to provide adequate heat sinking as is. It should also be noted that if the ambient temperature in the environment of the sensor is significantly higher than room temperature, this could make heat dissipation more difficult and will have to be taken into account. If you have any specific questions, please contact your local Ophir representative to see how we can help you in your application.